start the recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for joining the SUTD's um, Learning Sciences Labs Office of Undergraduate Education's uh, monthly sharing session. This is the first session for 2021. And I think, uh, first of all, I'm very happy to see the people in campus, right? So it's nice that we can all get back together, but we are still doing this uh, sharing session online. Um, this is conducted monthly and typically there is like um, five to 10, 20 people uh, per session uh, from SUTD. And uh, so, you know, if you don't see that many people, that is quite normal because there is so many things, activities going on, not because uh, the talk is not interesting or anything like that. Okay, it's just that uh, it's also a small school. So I'm just giving the context for people who are here. I would also like to thank um, Dr. Anuradha Singh for, um, you know, uh, for accepting the invitation and also Nian Polytechnic for this collaboration and sharing session on student-centered learning with an augmented reality-based digital application. This is quite an interesting topic for us at SUTD right now. So uh, I'm sure that, um, you, you know, the recorded video will be watched by others here as well. A little bit about Dr. Anuradha. She is a senior lecturer at the School of Health Sciences, Nian Polytechnic for the last 10 years. She is a qualified medical doctor and an MD in clinical microbiology from Mumbai, India. She has worked in various uh, institutions in Singapore. And I know that she's a passionate teacher. She really reaches out uh, and she keeps trying to innovate teaching and learning using technology. Uh, I have um, known her personally for over 10 years as well. So, okay, so we have our first uh, SUTD member, Xiao Jun. Thank you for joining, Xiao Jun. I was just introducing Dr. Anu. Uh, she is from Nian Polytechnic, senior lecturer. Okay, so she'll be sharing with her, with us about um, her augmented reality um, app. Um, so uh, without much ado, because it's already 10 minutes and I'm mindful of people's time. Uh, so I would like to invite Dr. Anu to share a few words about herself and also to uh, tell us about the application that she has developed with her team. The team members are all listed in her slides, right? So I, I couldn't remember all their names, but thanks to the team as well. Thanks, Anu. Yeah. Uh, hi. Hi, Nacha. It was very lovely to see you again after so many years. And yes, we do go back a long time. And uh, I do remember having lunch with you over office when we were, when you used to work at the same place. Yeah, it's been a long time and it's lovely to catch up. And uh, so I will just start by sharing my screen and then I will uh, give some introduction. Uh, yeah, so as Nacha said, uh, my name is Dr. Anu, uh, uh, and uh, I'm working for 10 years uh, at the School of Health Sciences at Nian Polytechnic now. And uh, first of all, I would really like to thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share uh, our team's work on the topic which is uh, there on the screen. It is student-centered learning experiences using an augmented reality-based digital application. And the name of this application is uh, AR Heart. And the team's names are all visible there. And that is how the application looks on the, uh, on the Google Play Store and iTunes, where it is available for all kinds of uh, mobile phones. Uh, so uh, I will jump uh, straight away into this overview of this uh, presentation. So I will share a little about the rationale for app development and research and uh, about this ICT ecosystem, which is existing in the School of Health Sciences, uh, where we try our best to blend technology and pedagogy to enhance our student learning. And uh, after I introduce the apps uh, in which are there in the School of Health Sciences, I will talk about the app which I am involved in. It was the first app that I was involved in, which is AR Heart. 
and some research findings on the AR heart. And of course, it is not going to be uh, like a traditional lecture or presentation. I am going to share with you some screen recordings and uh, some experience from the students, how they find the app. And so what is our conclusion and which direction we are going towards. And so all these experiences I am making an attempt to share. So the, the School of Health Sciences is one of the nine schools in uh, Nian Polytechnic. And uh, we have been grooming healthcare professionals in the diploma, in two diplomas, the diploma of nursing and diploma in optometry. So as we know, this COVID-19, it has uh, really pointed out to us that uh, healthcare professionals are very crucial. They are the need of the hour. And so it, uh, we are very blessed to uh, groom these, uh, uh, these healthcare professionals uh, to help Singapore in times of need like this. And so why did we develop all these applications? Uh, why did we launch into all this? So at NEAN, we want our graduates to achieve multiple peaks of success. So once they have uh, finished their education and they have entered the working world, they, their learning in the class is over, but we also want them to learn beyond their classroom, learn at their workplace and be continued lifelong learners. So to make them, to groom them to be, uh, uh, to continue lifelong learning, we want to have a future ready campus. So for a future ready campus, what all is needed? So we are really going towards the uh, internet and infocom technology. And so we want to make our campus a uh, campus of the future to develop these hallmarks, which are the hallmarks of a NEAN student. They are passionate learners. They learn for their life. They are all uh, not just, and why are they learning? Because they are big hearted people. They also want to contribute positively to the community. They want to serve beyond their self. And with all these cross-cultural uh, exposure and everything, all this training that we give them, we want to uh, produce these globally smart professionals who are adaptable, who are flexible, who embrace change and who are very, very productive members of our community. So we want to uh, we aim to transform students for the future economy of Singapore. We want to give them professional skills, of course, that is what we are there for. But we also want them to serve from their heart, to, to have social and emotional competencies. So for which we always involve them in service learning, community service. And so when they develop all these 21st century skill and uh, they become globally smart professional who learn beyond the borders, who innovate, who are enterprising. So I feel that is what our attempts are. So at the School of Health Sciences, uh, uh, what you see on the screen is our vision and mission. So we want to be the leading health sciences education institution. We want to groom compassionate uh, healthcare professionals who think and they will uh, do this only if they have a sound knowledge, uh, sound education, uh, and not only that, but even uh, research capabilities. And so we, we need all these innovative pedagogies to serve the needs of the community and the industry. So we are digital to the core at the School of Health Sciences. So what you see on the screen are all these applications that are available at the present moment uh, in the School of Health Sciences. So some apps are for self-directed learning and we have introduced gamification. You know, today's learners are all these Generation Z kids. They are all digital natives. If you have seen, if you even glance, you're traveling through the MRT and you just glance around, you will see that every individual is into their phone. So that is what we see around us. And that is our students are no exception. So they are Generation Z natives. They're always into their phones. Now the traditional lectures by which we learned when we were students, they don't work anymore. 
we lose them within 20 minutes or 25 minutes of attention span. So we need to go with the times. We need to give them something more interactive during their lectures so that we can engage them better. And uh, thus, if we engage them better, we motivate them for learning. And this will improve the understanding of concepts. This will improve retention. This will also improve their exam performance. And eventually, yes, it will improve their application. So yes, so we have self-directed learning games. For example, you see Virtual Hospital 2, Virtual Hospital 3, you know, where they are the, the then busy missy. So uh, there is a game-based environment of the hospital and the student is a player in that game. There is a goal-driven problem space that is they are in that problem space and they have to solve that particular problem. In this case, it is a scenario, maybe it's a patient having some kind of disorder. And you know, when they go about solving that problem, they learn. Then even we have this new one, which is IPCP. So that, that game shows that there, there is a collaboration between different kinds of professionals in the hospital. And it's not only the job of the nurse or it's not only the job of a hospital, but there are so many people involved, physiotherapist, pharmacist, and name it and you have it. So this IPCP is a game for that. Then you see that small skeleton that is for their foundation subjects like the skeletal practice. So these are the foundation year one subjects where they learn about the structure and the function of the human body. And then that small heart symbol is what AR heart stands for. Uh, we also uh, have these e-clinical tools that you see at the right uh, bottom. And these are NPALM and we have medical abbreviations. We even have e-textbooks. Uh, we have also apps like NPRAC, CPRAC, SIMPRAC. So these are practical assessment app where their assessments are captured digitally. What is Rhesus is this is an app, which is an app that teaches CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. It is also digital, it is on their phone. And then we have uh, for the module of uh, mental health and palliative care, we have virtual reality based application on schizophrenia, on dementia. We have one on uh, the eye conditions as well. And this mixed reality, what is mentioned here, so this mixed reality of brain is a coming attraction. We are working towards it. And if all goes well, uh, we will be uh, releasing this app. So if you uh, see in 2022, we will have this mixed reality of brain that our students will be experiencing. What we see on this left corner bottom, we have now the latest one, artificial intelligence. We are using this. We have this Ask Chur, which is an AI tutor. And we have the other one, the, the lettering cannot be seen very properly. Yeah. Assess me, Chur. So this is the AI marker. So we have an AI tutor and AI marker. So our students, they can learn even beyond school hours. Uh, they, there is automated those answer, question and answer, and even assessments, which can be done by themselves, self-directed in a self-directed way. Our structure and function of human body that we teach in the human biosciences module, we have a smart book for that. So they come in with their laptops, they open the smart book, the lesson is running, they are doing self-directed, they are learning, even they learned about the microscope, the parts of the microscope, so many topics like that. So the, the, there is a very big shift in the education paradigm now. And uh, the, all these apps really, really helped us a lot when uh, in the last year, you know, COVID-19, we had home-based learning and we had online learning and all these apps were so useful for that time period. And so we knew that we are on the right track because we are prepared for uh, anything that will strike us. And even this year, the home-based learning is continuing. So all these apps were, very, very helpful for us. So if you see, this is how the mobile phone of our students look like. You know, all these buttons. Yeah, you, you always have these apps on everybody's phone. Only in the case of our students, all these buttons, these apps that you see are educational apps. 
So if they are going to be on their phone all the time, okay, then we give you the learning that is coming through to you through the mobile phone. That is how it is. You're on the phone, we give you your learning through the phone. And what you see on the right, these pictures, they are the e-textbooks. So we have e-textbooks for nursing skills, for pharmacology. So yes, everywhere we are going digital, we are digital to the core, everything is e nowadays. So uh, you might wonder that how are we making all these apps left, right, and center? No, no, no. There is a systematic approach for app development. Uh, we identify the gaps first. Then we develop solutions. Okay, when we develop the solutions, yes, we can hire a vendor and we can pay them and we can work together with them to produce the app. But that is not enough. When we are uh, when we, the app is being released to the students, we have to train our staff. Uh, how will they conduct all the, mm, the usage of the app in the classroom? So staff training is a very, very important part. The app delivery and release to the students also is in phases. And so a lot of management is involved. And uh, when the app is released and it is used in students, we always involve it in a final year project, which is also done by mostly by our students, our year three students, and they do this research and we also get inputs through that, that whether this app that we have developed is uh, really useful to us and what, what are our findings and is it really making a positive impact on the student learning? So it is not, we, we need data, we need figures to show that yes, it is making a difference. So this is a very systematic approach for app development that we follow. And uh, we have a, a ICT committee and uh, we have uh, our regular meetings where all these issues are discussed. So now with that little background, I will uh, go into the AR heart. So which is the augmented reality of the heart. So why did we develop this app? So yes, we made this app uh, basically for the students of human biosciences uh, 1.1. I mean, it stemmed from there because uh, we were getting all these uh, students. Uh, you know that now with COVID-19, we are, everybody is attracted to the nursing profession. They want, they have the passion. They want to be the frontliners, optometrists or nurses, healthcare professional who are out there uh, helping everybody. So yes, this is a profession in demand. So we have all these students and uh, uh, a lot of our students do not have biology background. And then some of them have language barriers. They are international students. So, you know, in the uh, structure and function of the human body, a subject that we call anatomy and physiology, there is complex medical jargon. There are so many uh, terms, the terminology is very challenging. Okay, you will say students are online, they will be on their phone, they can search the internet, Okay, yes, they will come across YouTube videos, but yes, YouTube videos and all are limited, which will help them to understand better. And moreover, they are not tailor-made for nurses. Most of them are for medical students. And uh, so how our students end up in learning more, much more beyond their scope, and that makes the whole thing much more difficult. And of course, the, the videos are just uh, also one way, you just watch, watch, watch. There is no or very limited interactivity or very lim even now if augmented reality videos are available free. The augmentation is also very limited uh, on the free videos especially. And of course, the free videos and all will not give any access to quizzes. Uh, if you want access to assessments and all, you have to pay. So all these challenges are there, though some free software and all is available online. Then we have uh, around a cohort of 600 and also around 50 to 60 ITE students joining every year. So we have classes uh, in a day, we have so many classes going on around the clock. And so uh, the students have a limited time with the models in the lab. So if they want to learn after those limited 1.5 to two hours that they have in the lab, 
we have to give them something that will enable them to learn in a self-directed way, just the way that they would learn in the lab, handling the model, turning it up and down, examining it, learning about the parts in a way that uh, helps them focus, that engages them, not something like a book, which, oh, go and read your book. We cannot tell them, go read your book. They will all fall asleep. We also will fall asleep if we are in their place. So we have to give them something to engage them, to give them this interactivity. Yeah. So that is uh, their uh, stem. So one day I had this, uh, I think this was 2014 and I had taken my lecture on the heart and I was walking back to my office when I uh, saw one of the students from my lecture group in the lift. And I just happened to ask that student, so my dear, how was the lecture for you? And he said, uh, yes, it was good. It was very good, but I wish, uh, I wish I had something interactive to do in the lecture. I wish the diagram that you were showing on the big screen could reach out, I could touch the heart, I could play with it, I could move it around. I mean, that kind of interactivity would have made me more engaged and more focused. And so uh, he went off, the, I reached my office, he went off and his words stayed in my brain. And I think that was the birth of the idea of this project. And I went and uh, spoke to my director about it. And that is the way this project was born. And I was very happy that I was supported for this and the team worked very hard. And so we uh, developed this uh, AR Heart application, which is an interactive augmented reality-based application. It is available for both your iPhone as well as your Android. And those are the search terms for that. So this idea, which was born in it, 2014, of course, it took a long time because that time augmented reality was not so common. So we had to do our groundwork. We had to see many things. We had to find out who in Singapore is doing it and well, which vendor will do it. So yes, it was uh, started finally in 2017 and uh, we took two years to complete it. And that is how the app looks. The heart symbol of that app is the small art. Uh, and that is how it looks. <clears throat> so when you, these are some of the uh, starting points of the app, because I'm sure you're bored at listening to me talk now. So when the student scans the trigger, and I will show you some videos later. So what is here, this heart, uh, human heart is the trigger which the student will scan. And this figure will pop out of that. And that is the augmented reality. So this figure will pop out and uh, that is the heart. So you see this, this picture that we are seeing here is a picture when the student is using the, uh, the heart picture on his, his or her mobile and then looking at it through the iPad. So when he's looking at this trigger through the iPad, it looks as if, you know, this uh, heart has popped out of his phone. Of course, it's a virtual image which has been superimposed on it. So that is the, so when I show you the recordings, then you will understand this better. So this is augmented reality where real world and virtual images come together and there is an interaction that is provided and this has been used, uh, literature shows that it has been very successfully used because you can observe minute details into the human body in each organ. Everything can be observed in detail, just like you are uh, opening up the human body during a surgery and operation and checking or a dissection where you open and examine each part of the body. And uh, so medical students and nursing students are using this left, right and center nowadays. Now so many other extended realities have also come in. So it increases classroom interaction, motivation, engagement of the student retention and test course, these uh, parameters that I was just discussing that we want to increase. So yes, of course we designed this app and that is another topic about the app design, which is uh, not maybe in the scope of today's uh, sharing, uh, but to cut the long story short, I'm uh, launching into the research findings. So we went into a detailed research on this app 
and we wanted to evaluate these parameters that you're seeing in red, self-efficacy, motivation, engagement, and test performance. And so, yes, there was a quasi experimental study design and it goes uh, for uh, approval by the IRB and all, all kinds of requirements. Yes, we have to satisfy. I won't go so much into detail into the protocol and all that, but yes, it, this was the study and we were uh, researching what were the positive learning experiences. Are there any uh, when our students are using this app and what are they and uh, does it justify our uh, expenditure of money and effort on this app? So we were studying motivation. Uh, we were studying self-efficacy, uh, performance. Yeah. And we, uh, what is the task value that whether the students believe that it is important to do this task whether this task is useful, whether it is interesting and whether it engages them. So we have used the proper tools like the agentic engagement scale and the MSLQ, so all these questionnaires to study all these findings. So yes, uh, what we, actually, to give you a very, very brief idea, what we did was there was half a, one group we studied the uh, AR Heart application in a self-directed way and the other group studied in the traditional way using PowerPoints and we compared the data from these two groups. So what were our findings? So our findings were, so this is self-directed learning. So in self-directed learning, we found that uh, self-efficacy gave the only significant finding while in all these other values, task value engagement, et cetera, we did not get any significant difference between the traditional group and the PowerPoint group. But uh, surprise, surprise, when we, uh, when we use the app in the classroom directed by the, by the facilitators, then we had very different results. So then all the, all the parameters gave significant differences, test performance and all these parameters that I mentioned. There was a significant improvement in the student's test performance when the students used the app in the classroom guided by the teachers. So when they were doing it on their own, when the teachers were not even involved, I mean, the app was just released to the students it was told to this half, half a group of students to go and explore. And yes, uh, they were guided for it. Of course, uh, a, bit, a little bit of a basic guidance that what is the app and so they did it. But uh, that time we didn't get as much significant results. So the research findings uh, that there is a significant difference we got only in self-efficacy when they were exploring the app themselves but we got a significant difference in all parameters when the app was facilitated in the classroom by lecturers. So this is the data and this is the proof that, the proof of the pudding lies in the eating. Yeah, so this is the proof that we got. So yes, we uh, still go on with this app and we uh, want, uh, we, uh, it has this highly interactive and media rich activities. We have enhanced the app more um, because we had certain enhancements with us. So we had budget for enhancement. So we have actually enhanced it even more now, added more augmentation to it. And uh, we are hoping that uh, it will reinforce the linkages to the clinical conditions and we are applying it to more modules. It is a work in progress. We are still doing research as well on it. And uh, we are continuously taking student feedback on uh, what are their experiences in the app. So it's a very systematic process. So before our semester starts, we would have already been uh, working with the, the different modules that would employ the different apps and uh, making plans to roll it out for the students. So uh, we want this, uh, these kind of apps, which have high impact and IDM features and all the hallmark cutting edge uh, technologies. <clears throat> so uh, yes, that was in short. And I'm uh, now I would like to uh, show you uh, some screen recordings of the app. So this is the first screen recording that I have. 
and uh, this is a silent recording i purposely kept it silent because when it runs then i can show you i can talk myself about these app and so you see this one what is happening here is this is the trigger you can see my hand holding this uh, trigger which is the picture the printed picture so this trigger we are introducing into our students module book so when they are studying their module book and they come to this trigger all they have to do is uh, whip out their mobile phone and uh, scan the qr code or scan the image so we are all very used to scanning qr codes now like we what we do for the safe entry yeah so just the same way we have to scan the code and yes this uh, figure pops out and you can see that the heart is there and the heart will also pop out and uh, that is how the app starts basically and as we go ahead so you have see or seeing this heart has popped out and now the student if this was the student he was turning the heart right left up down examining all the aspects of it just like he would examine a model so on the screen you see there is a ar mode which is called as the augmented reality mode this other app is this other button is for may going back to the normal mode so now what what is happening here is you see here these are all the terminologies that they have to study all the parts of the heart and on the left side all these are the views of the heart how does it look uh, from the front that is anteriorly how does it look from the back which is posterior lateral is how it looks from the side medial is how it looks towards the midline and superior of course is how it looks from the top and inferior how it looks from the bottom so yes so they the student has to explore each of these views and uh, when he is exploring each of these views and when he clicks on each of these parts you see the you know, explanation of the part coming up and the arrow also points to the part and the app is designed in such a way that unless the student goes through all the parts he cannot move to the next activity so uh, later on if you are interested i will show you a more detailed recording of the app uh, that recording which we gave our students when we introduced this app uh, as a part of the 10% uh, unauthenticated assessment later on i'll show you but right now i want to share some important features so there are these uh, assessments so we have a mixed bag of assessments uh, if i go back slightly the we have these assessments which are number one is label the heart so it is a very basic assessment so this is when the students are very new so they will label the heart they will drag and drop the label as what i will show you so they can drag and drop and you know there are marks so when they started there are marks if they can drag and drop the label correctly they will get some uh, 100 points so it's a carrot they are motivated if they do it second time correctly then they will get 50 points and if uh, they don't succeed after the second attempt and do it at the third attempt well they won't get any points yeah so they can repeat this uh, as long as they want and uh this app is only open to our students of me and polytechnic at the moment uh and uh, when they log in with their student id and their passwords all the data gets collected at the back end so we have their scores and we can go and see how much they have scored we can go and check how many times each student has done these uh, practiced on this app now this view what you see is when the heart is cut open so now the student is examining what are the structures inside what was seen outside now how does it look from inside and then again they are doing the drag and drop activity so you see and then they are scoring so i've just tried to simulate a student playing and done the screen recording <clears throat> now we can so there are these two modules they uh, i'm sorry yeah huh? this goes very fast unless i stop it so there are these two modules uh, ecg and uh, one sec sorry ecg and the heart let it i think let it run the way it runs and i can explain 
Yeah. So we have this coronary circulation, which are the arteries supplying the heart because most of the problems like, you know, a person has a heart attack, we say. So what is a heart attack? It is coronary thrombosis. When these arteries are blocked with a thrombus, which is a blood clot. Yeah, so the coronary circulation is one of the module we introduce and electrocardiogram or ECG, which is the most basic test when a clinician suspects that there is some heart problem in the patient. So when the student starts the app, it, is, it looks something like this. And you know, this, this, like this small button, uh, when they click on it, they can see the learning objectives of the activity. So they understand why are they doing this activity. And then there are these buttons about, means what is this app about, how to play this app. Then these are the high scorers, their records, the, can also see their own score log, player info. So all these things are there, which help them. They can do this app many times and they can see if their score has improved. How are they as compared to the high scorers, you know? And what are these one, two, three? So one, two, three are the different levels that each activity is at. Usually level one is the for year ones, uh, two is for year twos and three is for year threes. So it goes like that. However, it's not restricted. If a person wants, he can just go on playing the app. And uh, I mean, when we, when we introduced it to our year ones for the 10% assessment, I don't know as students what they thought that some of them thought that they are supposed to complete everything. So they just completed one, two, three, everything. And we can see their scores at the back end that they are not scoring so well at first, but they are going on and on. They're doing the app seven times, eight times until they complete and until they get that score. Because you have told them this is 10% and they want that 10%, you see? So yes, the carrot is there to push them and to make them do the app and they are doing it. Uh, and uh, they are finding it fun actually. So uh, we saw that proof when we looked at the back end. And uh, so you see this, uh, another one is on the ECG. So when the ECG module starts, it uh, explains what are the different squiggly lines or what are these waves in the ECG, you know? So first we, why, why are we doing this? So first we explain the normal to the student. The app explains what is normal, how should it be? So we kind of try to teach them first the basics. They have come in, they don't have any knowledge. So we have to teach them first and then they do the activity themselves. So yes, we are, we are working on making this app uh, available uh, to, the, to the other educational institutions. And if any educational institution expresses their interest, of course we could work something out that we could share and uh, the, uh, the app could be shared because knowledge always grows by sharing. So yes, we are definitely uh, open to sharing the app. And uh, so we will get more inputs at that time. And then you can see the whole app. For now, I'm just showing you parts of the app. So it might be disjointed, but the whole app, because it will be quite long, you know, the video. So in case any of you are interested, I will be giving my email at the back and uh, definitely do drop me a line and I could share the detailed videos with you and you could go through them to understand more about the app. So, well, uh, we go back to the app. In here, now you see, uh, there is a higher level of learning. Now the student is actually trying to construct the ECG. So how he constructs the ECG is that he taps on these two points. So the app gives him instructions. He keeps on tapping on these two points, like playing the tap, tap game, you know, press and hold and release. And when he taps and taps and taps, he produces, he constructs the ECG record. So in doing so, the student understands that when I tap on point A, I get this small wave, which is the P wave. When he taps on point B, he gets the big QRS complex. And then he understands what is A. So A is atrium, B is ventricle. So then he learns to associate what is the cause of these waves in the electrocardiogram. And you see everything is in the augmented mode. They can go back to the normal mode, but they have their, it's their choice. 
which, which whichever mode they want to learn in. And so this is the tap tap game. And so I'll just push a bit ahead and you see here, this is the electrical pathway behind it. So yes, the app does go to the very basic level as well. And it's always, it can move if you move the trigger that moves as well. So learning is always on the go. And now this is the, the assessment on the electrocardiogram. So now uh, I think the, I have recorded the level two. I wanted to show you the level two. Where you see there is, now here, here there is an audio. So you see, we have tried to cater to the various learning profiles. If you have a, if, if you are a kinesthetic learner, you learn by movement, okay, go do the tap, tap, tap game. If you are a, a, a visual learner, there are so many beautiful graphics. If you are an auditory learner, okay, we are giving you the sound. So you see there is a sound and it impresses on the student. Yes, this is the ECG. Now you see, this is the normal rhythm. This is the normal beat of the heart. Now the heart is beating faster and this condition is called as sinus tachycardia where the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute. Now this, the heart is beating slower, heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute. So you see this kind of this way we are trying to teach them these different conditions and then when do they get these different conditions that will also be there. Then they are exposed to various electrocardiograms and they are taught about the various conditions. So that is the way uh, this is progressing. So I'm just pushing it a little forward for the sake of, uh, so this way they, they are always scanning the triggers which are in their books. And this way they progress while they are learning. They can launch into the application anytime. So we use this application during our lectures, during our practicals, like we are in the lecture. We come to that part, we can tell the student, please take out your mobile phone and scan the trigger. The trigger may be on our screen, the trigger may be is in their book. So they can scan and they can start their interactivity. So it is. Uh, it makes the lecture less monotonous and we give them something to do. Now this one, yes, this one I wanted to show you just now the one that was happening. You see here, huh? this is blocking of the artery. So our student will place, uh, I will uh, press the blinking point and when he presses the blinking point, that artery, that blood vessel will be blocked and then the, all the heart will turn blue. That means the heart muscle is not getting the blood supply. And at this point, when this heart turns blue, the electrocardiogram is like that. So the student learns to correlate the clinical conditions and the electrocardiogram. What is the finding in the patient? What is an infarct? How does an infarct look like? And of course, every activity is always followed by assessment and there can be simple assessments, there can be fixed kind of assessments, there can be all different mixed bag of assessments always to keep the student motivation and to keep the student engaged. So uh, this were the two screen recordings that I wanted to show you. And uh, yes, you are welcome to email me for uh, more detailed uh, screen recordings and I can share them with you. And so the, in, it ends up with the student can, who can visualize the dynamic internal processes in the body and it makes their learning more relevant to them. So instead of learning in a dry manner and uh, trying to memorize everything, because I often find students saying, uh, teacher, I, I cannot memorize everything. Oh, but you don't need to memorize. If you understand this concept, then I always used to think, why are my students saying like that? They want to memorize. And then I know that, oh, when I learned, I learned it, I dissected the human body. I saw patients, I saw this, I saw that, and then I correlated everything. But my student is not able to dissect first. So I have to give some simulation and the student, I have to give him something that helps the student to visualize 
actually what is the dynamic internal process that is happening in the body. And yeah, so now this is an assessment. We have used our signature pedagogy, which is scenario-based learning. And this activity shows a clinical scenario about a case which is actually in the hospital. So the student experiences this and he has activity assessment like multiple choice questions. Uh, feedback is provided for every answer, uh, right or wrong that the student does and points are also provided. The score also is given to the student so that he can continue with his assessments. And we often put this small section for a small uh, 2.5 to 5% marks. So this motivates the students to uh, carry out uh, their learning. So these are some actual pictures of the students uh, using this uh, application. And these are the nursing years one, two, and three students. And you can see that they are using the app with their mobile phone. These are the year ones, of course. These are the year one students and they are using their uh, laptop and they are using their mobile phone. Maybe they have the trigger there and they are scanning it. You know, so it can be used with the iPads as well. So it's quite versatile that way. And so this is uh, the student is scanning uh, the trigger, which is on the projected on the whiteboard here. And uh, so the, this, these were taken during the research project when we were facilitating the app in the classroom and then there was data collection and all that. Uh, finally, uh, I come to the student experience. So what did the students find? So when we had surveyed the student, uh, we had a very uh, encouraging uh, experience that more than 65% of the students agreed. Uh, they found learning value. They were motivated. Uh, they were happy with the app. Uh, they loved the visual design of the app. They said the app was user-friendly for most of the phones. If somebody has a very uh, old uh, or a mobile phone doesn't have those specs, then yes, there might be some issue with the navigation and the speed. And so these 3%, less than 3% who disagreed, I think uh, there might have been those kind of technical issues. So of course there will be technical issues when you are doing with technology, the internet speed. So. Those are some of the things which, uh, of course, need to be uh, tackled with in those particular cases. But most of the students, you know, they have the latest phone nowadays. So you know, all these things are not an issue at all. So yes, con in conclusion, the self in self-directed learning, we saw that only self-efficacy was increased. But when the app was facilitated by teachers in the classroom, all the parameters of study showed significant difference. And should this prove to us that yes, we did reach somewhere, of course, uh, we know that our students, when they are coming in in year one, uh, maybe the self-directed learning component is just starting to develop. So yes, we, we are carrying out these studies in our year two and year three students. And I believe with their level of learning increasing, their cognition increasing, I believe that we will get more positive result in self-directed learning as well. But yes, facilitation is important uh, and students' positive experience with learning from educational applications might thus be dependent on effective facilitation by the educators. So uh, I, this is one of my favorite quotes that uh, technology will not replace uh, great teachers, but technology when given to the hands of a great teacher, a competent teacher, it can bring about transformation in education. So this is really something that we experienced through this research project that we did and research is still continuing on this uh, particular application. Uh, so that brings me uh, to the end of my sharing session and I acknowledge uh, all these people who have guided me all along for preparing this presentation and at various uh, points in this journey. Uh, our Center of Learning and Technology, uh, Mr. Tan Yukong, 
our education specialist, Ms. Tina Su, and last but not the least, Ms. Michelle Ko, who is our assistant director of technology. And that is uh, my email ID. And uh, Natcha will also have this uh, and she has my contact. So we welcome any kind of collaborations. And as I uh, mentioned, uh, our uh, we are involved in many projects, even if you guys are interested in any of the other, other apps that we showed or want to collaborate, uh, please let us know. And uh, future projects are in the pipeline. And the one that we are working on at present is the AR, VR, MR. MR is mixed reality of brain, uh, where we are uh, aiming to give much more immersive experience to the student and much more collaborative learning to our students. Uh, and in the final, I had this uh, fun poll. And even in the recorded presentation, you could just scan the QR code. Now we all have become very expert QR code scanners in the COVID era. And so I would love to see if you could scan this QR code, I would love to see what would be the results uh, as to what do you think is the most important feature of a, for a digital application. So, uh, uh, shall I wait? I, I don't know how many is the audience now. Yes, 10 participants. Yes, we have 10 participants. So if you could please help me to scan. I would be thankful. So I'll just give it one minute or so. Thank you so much, Anu, for such a, a inspiring talk, of course, because yeah, thank you so much. the yeah. app is really very well designed and very interactive, very immersive. So it's not just uh, a 2D coming alive as 3D. There's a lot of things that is put into it. And the finding that um, facilitation is very important. That's one of the questions that I was going to ask. So it's five o'clock, even though we started at 4.10, so we technically end at 5.10, but I realize people might have um, activities. So if you want to leave, that's all right. Uh, and you can stay on to ask questions. So before I ask my question, would the participants have any questions for Anu? Yeah, uh, maybe can, can I ask something? Sure, yes, sure, please, please go ahead. Yeah, so, so I'm wondering, how do we make this uh, AR, VR to be scalable and sustainable in education context? Because what I found is the cost of content development is very high. And I saw, for example, in your experience, how easy or how difficult it is, let's say, if as an educator, you want to modify the content, for example, once the product is being released, uh, um, how, how do we how can we make it uh, scalable mm -hmm. and also sustainable yeah uh, thank you so much for your question it's very interesting and very relevant and uh, actually uh, yes when we started on this app it was uh, the technology was not so widely prevalent you see and uh, so we actually we had to even present it to our management two times uh, the first time we were given some feedback and we had to go and do our research in Singapore as to which institution is using, what are they doing, how they are using it, how are they training their facilitators. We had 101 questions which we were given and we were told to find out the answers. And that is precisely the reason why we started in 2016. And then when we rolled out, it is already 2019, you know. So I know I have walked this journey, a uh, very uh, uh, painful journey, sometimes frustrating journey, because we found that most of the institutions in Singapore started work on it, and then they stopped. They started and they stopped. I mean, this is what I was talking about is 2017, yeah? And then if we ask them that, why did you stop? Well, they, the reasons were not revealed to us. So it was a baby steps that we took and we did this. And I'm very glad that 
uh, our uh, my, my organization Nian Polytechnic they supported us. Of course, the cost that time uh, was more, but now augmented reality has become more common. Now it is available after uh, say four years or five years. Now whatever cost we put in, now it is available at half that cost. Because technology, the technology has advanced, it has progressed and it has become more common now. Now augmented reality is everywhere. At that time I had just three vendors who were quoting for me. And after the briefing out of three vendors, two vendors disappeared. They said that, no, we cannot give you this application. So I'm talking of 2017, yeah. But now there are many more vendors doing it. There are at least 15 vendors now in Singapore who would be doing it. And so as the vendor uh, quantity increases, of course, the cost will come down. Okay, as to your question on scalability, how do we modify it? So you have to design your specs in such a way that we the rights should be belonging to our institute and we should be able to modify a certain aspects. We can keep aside some budget for enhancement like we had done. We had about 20 mandates and we use those mandates and we put in more augmentation in the app. Those screencasts that I showed you, uh, they were after the enhancement. So more augmentation we put in because when we get the feedback, when we run the app with our students, we also experience that, oh, how it is running now. So, oh, we want this improvement. And for example, uh, the quizzes, the assessments that I showed you, we have uh, access to the back end. We can modify the quizzes, we can add new questions. So the quiz need not be necessarily the same. We can modify it, we can tweak it. So yes, those kind of uh, rights we have. So you have to craft your specs uh, very tightly and uh, see which vendor would give you that, the intellectual rights, the intellectual property rights. Cost has come down. The cost is not a very big deal anymore for augmented reality at least, because now they are going more towards mixed reality. So now that is the one that is uh, costing more at present, but I'm very sure to one year or two years down the line, even mixed reality will uh, be more costly. So I, I hope that answered your question. The, the limitation with cost will always be there. So uh, it depends on, uh, yes, uh, how much. And you have to prove to uh, your management that uh, what, what money you're spending, it is worth it. And uh, that is why the research uh, findings and uh, so much of student feedback and everything we keep on taking because we have to justify the expenditure on uh, this application. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Dr. Anu, thank you for Hi. a good talk. Hello. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah, I teach this same material to my bio, in my biomedical engineering course. So it's really interesting to see it taught in a different way. Uh, I had a question on the um, classroom setting that you use. So you mentioned, which is quite interestingly that you saw performance improve, you know, in a facilitated, guided kind of a setting. So could you share a little bit more about your class size, whether the students worked in groups, was sure. it more lecture style or more tutorial style, etc.? Sure, sure. So when we made this app, uh, um, we were told we always submit uh, detailed lesson plans and where we all will be using it, for which modules we will be using it. Uh, so yes, I we have uh, what results we got. Uh, we have mainly used it in the practical group setting, and for our practical groups, our uh, typical class size is anything between seventeen to eighteen students, and so they have one teacher. And so the teacher, when the teacher introduces uh, the, uh, the in this particular research, those who did with PowerPoint, the teacher only introduced the PowerPoint. Those who did with the app, the teacher introduced the app. And then at the end of that exercise, everybody did the, the app. So it was an equal opportunity to everybody to experience the, the, the gadget also. So that is how we carried it out. And uh, for the cardiovascular system, number one, the topic was chosen because that is the topic the students find most challenging. Okay, so we have at least three, two or three practicals on that. 
so we incorporated uh, those kind of activities like coronary circulation ecg you know these activities so when that activity comes then the teacher will uh, direct the usage of the app we also used it as a flipped classroom setting because the student has the app with them so yes you prepare all these you explore all these and then you come to class and then we we can give them a quiz in class then they can do the quiz then again the teacher will guide we can also use this app in the classroom as i said the triggers or the markers for the app are in the students module book so when we show if we show the trigger on the powerpoint screen during the lecture we can say oh yeah students you can use your mobile today in class oh my god they are so happy to hear that you know they will immediately take out their mobile anyway they are using it under the desk right to text their friends or whatever so now they take out their mobile they scan oh my god the app starts so you know there is kind of a in lecture becomes interesting so they can then inter interact with that so it's 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 just your imagination and the way you plan your lesson uh, i think it can be really used in um, any setting lecture or practice yes but you have to plan the session properly so and also if you have say four lecture groups like we have four lecture groups we have 32 38 practical groups so we have to train all the facilitators because all the facilitators they have to conduct the class in the same way so that all the students get the same experience and they nobody is short changed for anything so training of your uh, teaching team would also be very important and very crucial okay thank, thank you thank you so much uh, hi dr anu hi hi yeah so it was a, a nice talk i uh, really enjoyed it so uh, my question is um, um so how many uh, people like are working on the project so are you like a developing it in house or outsourcing to some other teams uh no no we developed it totally in house but yes uh, of course the vendor developed it for us we are education we are not uh, uh, we are not uh, trained in technology or the app design that way uh, it was a it was a team uh, we were, we are a team of uh, four people here and then in the research project uh, we were joined by two more uh, of our colleagues so it was like four to six uh, as the core group of course in implementation the whole team helped us so our whole team consists of probably uh, seven or eight of lecturers and we also had two adjunct lecturers and uh, if you ask me about the vendor i think i don't know about their team because we always used to meet the uh, vendor herself and then she has probably a big team at the back end because uh, they even had to fabricate the model you know so we give the model then they have to fabricate the prototype so it involves uh, so many meetings with the vendor even the color of the model texture of the model how should it look when the artery is blocked that purple color that hue of purple you know we had to sit with a shade card with her you know so it was very interesting that journey and these were the people who were involved thank you yeah uh, i think it's interesting because like, i just <laughs> like to introduce myself so i'm from uh, fpd game lab so we are a game developer and we have like a, a, a similar similar group like like you oh. so we also focusing on the ar uh, vr and all that so maybe like uh, we can talk uh, offline yes time. yes definitely definitely we could collaborate or do something it is very nice to meet you and uh, so you could understand where i was coming from when i said we sat with the shade card and the model you know because the vendor is not uh, from that field you see so to make them understand that is uh, a challenge also but all the activities were designed by our team and to great detail like flow charts what happens after this what happens after that you know so we have to give them the detailed flow charts then the vendor comes back to us with whatever they have designed and it undergoes that trial error ding dong ding dong happening you know yeah yes i totally understand thank you so much thank you thank you anu so to follow up actually um, all of the people who have asked dr oka dr xiaochun and uh, yoga 
all of them are from SUTD and they are themselves involved in some sort of app development, AR development or mobile app developments and, you know, uh, yoga is from uh, uh, the game lab. So uh -huh. these are people who have a deep interest in this field. So hopefully there is some collaborative project that is possible for all of you. Uh, the question I was going to ask is from the point of, um, you know, the idea that, okay, let's develop something that is uh, like an AR um, um, product or whatever, right? Uh, AR di uh, digital uh, application. From, from that point of, you know, seeded thought um, to meeting the developers, um, you know, how how was how was the journey like? I mean, I, I can see this will probably take a, a one hour lecture or something <laughs> like that, or one hour sharing. But uh, you know, if you could if you could summarize it, because it, it seems very complicated, and then there's like so many different parts that is involved. So did you do it step by step? Yes. Um, yeah. Yes, it was it was definitely step by step, and uh, we we were very very well supported by our. Uh, Office of Learning and Technology, and we have the Computer Center colleague also in the team. So uh, parts that we could not understand were really related to the server, related to the back end, our Computer Center colleagues uh, uh, would help us. And uh, so it's always like that. It was a whole team effort. Um, and uh, because sometimes your own ideas you tend to uh, kind of stagnate or sometimes there is no solution and your brain just uh, refuses to work. You feel very blocked. And then another person in your team comes out, hey, I know the solution to this, you know. And so so it's a very fruitful journey, yes. But uh, what I can share is it was the first project that I did. So it was quite a long journey. Uh, so now, uh, but yes, uh, one learns. So I'm very, uh, very glad that it was filled with all those uh, stumbling blocks because every block is a learning point. So definitely I emerged uh, more richer uh, in my learning experience, what I got. And uh, so now that is the reason why when, when we are uh, doing our next project, I am, I am in that team in the capacity of an advisor. So with what I have learned, I am will be guiding my other colleagues. And now again, we are working together on another project. So that is the very satisfying part of the journey when you underwent that process. And now you are, uh, you are, you have developed that little bit of thing that you can share this uh, knowledge and watch it grow. And you also learn while you're sharing because, you know, they say that uh, you learn best when you teach others. So you are also growing even more. So it is an unending growing journey. And so I'm, I'm, very, I'm very glad that uh, if we can collaborate with somebody and we can learn more from them, that would be enriching, mutually enriching. So yes, it was a long journey, but uh, hopefully now the journeys will be shorter with uh, what we learned. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. It's 5.16, so uh, I would uh, like to bring the session to a uh, close. And I would like to thank Anu and team for, um, for the good work and for you know, the generosity in sharing at SUTD with us. And also to our SUTD participants for the continued support. Uh, these are the regular people, people that will you know, always uh, come. So I'm really thankful for their interest and innovations in teaching and learning as well. Next month, we will have Norman Lee sharing on, um, I can't remember the topic, something on analytics, I think, learning analytics. So um, please do join us for the session. And for further collaboration, I think we will definitely have something going. Maybe we will have a more one-to-one -one meeting if needed to um, sure, you know, sure. share with, uh, yeah. Sure. So thank you so much. Uh, I, I don't have the crowd to clap for you. I don't need that kind of applause. <laughs> uh, it is, it is, uh, even you. the questions are from the people, uh, the few questions that I got, I really enjoyed interacting and please feel free to, that's my email ID and our yeah. 
more. I have I have sent them, and all all of these folks are uh, like close network, so they will know yeah. how to yeah. get in touch with me and yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I'm quite sure you know something will develop. We we have uh, seen in the past after the talks uh, there are some. Um, uh, connections after that and then we go on to develop something so yeah, yeah maybe you also want to engage with our game lab uh, yeah yeah of course yes yeah, of they, course. they develop for outs, outside uh, people as well so yes, yeah, yes. it's not just meant for SUTB. oh okay yeah. that would be wonderful okay yeah. thank you Naja. thank it you, has thank you so much yes, yes it has been, been lovely touch. spending thank you this folks. time yeah yeah, so I'll take your leave now, yeah? Okay, yes. Yeah. Bye-bye then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.